Lovely to come and have an opportunity to share with you in, uh, monthly, which is great. And uh, if you've been around for the last couple of months, uh, we've been doing a little series on Elijah. And so today is the, the final week in that group of messages. But let's just uh, take a, a moment as we have just sung that fantastic song. Let us just be still before the Lord as we come and hear from his word this morning. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that we can just take a moment now just to be still in your presence. Lord, you are the God of all possibilities. This morning, Lord, whatever our need, whatever our concern, Lord, hear our prayer. Maybe our hearts need to be still. Maybe our minds need to just settle. And again be reminded that you are God. Lord, hear our prayers. Hear the cry of our hearts this day. Thank you that you are God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are our hope and our salvation. Our joy. Our comforter. Fill us with your spirit, Lord God, that we may effectively be your hands and feet and minister here in this community and beyond. Lord, thank you for characters in the Old Testament and new, but this morning, Lord, we thank you for Elijah and as we again focus on him, we thank you that he was a man of faith and a man of prayer and may that encourage us this day. In Jesus' name, Amen. It's always exciting to open God's Word and to share with you today, and I believe certainly this morning that God has a word of encouragement for us all here in this place. Elijah, he understood the, the power of prayer. We're going to focus on that a bit today. He came before God, he had boldness and confidence, and probably at times we don't feel that either, do we? We don't feel too bold or too confident sometimes when we come before God, but Elijah did. And it's interesting, in the book of James, in the New Testament, James chapter 5, verse 17, we read these few words. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. I like that. Elijah was a man just like us. Isn't that good? That's an encouragement. He prayed earnestly. How do we pray? Most of us, if we're honest, probably don't pray enough. When we do pray, maybe it's not as focused as we need to be. Maybe we come with a shopping list. God, I need this and this and that thing and that other thing and you know about that and then there's Aunt Mavis and Uncle Bill and, and then there's the me and then there's... How do we pray? How do we pray? Let us come with Him with earnest and heartfelt prayers. God, help me. God, watch over me. God, guide my life. Hopefully you don't have to remind God it's you. Hello, God, it's me again. Sorry. No. Who are you? Hopefully not. But Elijah prays with confidence and boldness. And God moves and acts and comes through. Let our prayers be ones of great faith. Elijah prayed, if you know the story, if you remember from a few weeks ago, he prayed and it didn't rain for three and a half years. It's 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 42, up on the screen there for you. We see this picture of Elijah, he climbs up a mountain. 1 Kings 18, 42. Elijah climbed to the top of Carmel, bent down to the ground, and put his face between his knees. 
So here he is. He's on the ground. He's bending down. Face between his knees. And he says to his servant, Go and look towards the sea. He told his servant. And he went up and looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, Go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, There's a cloud, a small cloud. As small as a man's hand rising up out of the sea. This little cloud. Something was happening. This morning we're going to look at four principles that hopefully will change and encourage your prayer life. Effective prayers are humble prayers. Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel. He needs to get away. He needs to seek the Lord. There, there needs to be no distraction. And so there he finds himself on that mountain. Friends, find a place to pray. Find a place every day that's free of distraction and give God your, deten your attention. He desires to hear from you and he desires to hear from me as we seek him in prayer. And we see that Elijah has a humble posture as he bends down to the ground and puts his face between his knees. Humble in mind, humble in posture, humble in heart. He bows down before God Almighty. He knew that God could bring the rain. He knew that God could do what God said he could do. He might have been just a humble man. But he faithfully trusted in a big God. Almighty God, the creator of all things. Who's holy, who's the provider, who's the restorer. And so Elijah prays. You alone, God, can bring the rain. You, God, can do it. <coughs> What's caused us to humble ourselves before God in prayer? Let us not make prayer our last resort. We see in James chapter 4, verse 6 and 7, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Verse 10 says, Humble yourself before the Lord, and He, He will lift you up. God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let us humble ourselves to God. Let Him carry us and lift us and sustain us as we be people of prayer. Let Him lift us. What a promise. What powerful words. Be humble before Him and He will sustain me and He will sustain you. He'll lift us out of that pit and empty out and answer our prayer. He'll be our deliverer, our sustainer. Humility and prayer precede the miraculous. Less of us and more of God as we bow down. The greatness of God rises up. Second thing today. Effective prayers are specific prayers. Let us not be wishy-washy. Tell God your need. Tell Him your concern. Cry out to Him in prayer. Let us lay our requests before Him. Let us be clear. Let us be passionate. Let us cry out to the Lord. Let us be annoyed. God, why isn't this happening? Wonderful reminder in Psalm 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I cried to my God for help. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came before him into his ears. That's astounding. God is listening. He's more effective than Siri. 
That's listening all the time. <laughs> Scary, I know. But God is listening to you and I. And the psalm there encourages that in our distress, and in our worry, and in our struggle, He hears. He heard my voice. I love that. My small little voice. Well, sometimes not, but most of the time. He heard me. Let us call out to God in prayer, for He sees and hears our need. Make some noise. Prayers of hope. Prayers of joy. Prayers of concern. Elijah laid it out before God. We need some rain. I'm sure that's a cry on many a farmer's heart still to this day. We need some rain. Three and a half years in Elijah's case. He prayed. He came with the right attitude and the right heart and the right posture. God, we need some H2O. We need the rain. He tells his servant to go and look at the sea. <coughs> but nothing changes. So he keeps praying. And his servant keeps going. I don't understand why some prayers are answered and some prayers aren't. It would be the number one question as a pastor that people ask me. Why isn't God answering my prayer? Why hasn't he done this or that? And we need to rest in that he is God. But other times it might take a week or a day and it's answered and sorted. Or maybe you've been praying and it's still months and years. And you're still waiting for that answer now. I have the faith, friends, that God is in control. He sees and hears all, and He's at work. There are times there are some prayers that are answered in the most amazing and miraculous ways. Something that we never thought of or, or never thought would come together. It's amazing, and, and, and God brings different people in different situations, and He's at work. But we believed and prayed, but maybe the outcome was different to what we expected. Or what we prayed for, or what we hoped for. But let us remember that God is God. Let's take a look at 1 Kings 18, verse 43 and 44. Go and look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and looked. There's nothing there! <laughs> I can just imagine it. He said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. First time nothing, second time nothing, third time nothing, fourth time nothing, fifth time nothing, sixth time nothing. But on the seventh, on the seventh time in verse 44, the servant reported, A cloud, as small as a man's hand, is rising up from the sea. Some of you this morning are waiting today for your small cloud to appear. Keep looking, keep praying, keep hoping for that thing. From a simple beginning, God can bring a change. An insignificant little cloud. Involve God in your day. Involve Him in your situation. Maybe you don't have because you've forgotten to ask him. A few years back I heard a series of messages around James chapter 4 and in there it says you do not have because you do not ask God. And these series of messages were called Be a Master Asker. We've got to be master askers. 
Nothing is too hard for God. No doubt we've discovered that along the journey of life, that nothing is too hard for God. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you will find. Our third point this morning. Effective prayers are persistent prayers. Elijah kept praying and the servant kept looking until he saw this small cloud. Sometimes the most unlikely, the most unexpected people or circumstances or things will be an answer to your prayer and my prayer. We need to have the courage to keep praying and keep hoping and keep believing. Let us not stop. Let us not give up. On the screen there we have a picture of James 5.16. Pray. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. In other words, the prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Our prayers are powerful and effective. Elijah didn't quit. Let us not quit or give up, but keep praying. Let us be persistent in prayer. And fourth and finally, effective prayers and effective prayers are expectant prayers. Do we come with an expectant heart as we lay our requests before God? A small cloud has appeared. And we read this in 1 Kings 18 verse 44. So Elijah said, go and tell Ahab, hitch up your chariot and go down before the rain stops you. Because it's coming. The clouds will open and it's going to bucket down. It may just look like a small, insignificant cloud, but God is going to do a great thing. God will send the rain. From small beginnings, from small things, great things grow. From humble fishermen came a mighty move of God called the local church. And you and I today are part of that. Let us move in prayer. Let us move in faith. And see what God will do. Verse 45 of 1 Kings 18. Meanwhile, don't you love that? The sky grew black with clouds. The wind rose and a heavy rain. <coughs> Not a spitter spatter, but a heavy rain came on. And Ahab rode off. To Jezreel. God brought the rain. God brought the right outcome at the right time. What are we waiting for God to do? What's on your heart today? Do you need people to pray for you? Or are there people you need to pray with? Do you need an answer to prayer today? Look, let us see a small cloud rising up. God is about to do something amazing. Let us be faithful people of prayer. And let us see what God can do. The sky grew black. The clouds came together. The wind rose and heavy rain came upon that land. Faithful people prayed. And we, this morning, are his faithful people. May we be encouraged today from these words in 1 Kings about the story of Elijah.
May God bless you. We're going to stand and we're going to pray. Will you please join me? And then we'll sing. Father God, we thank you. But you know our need. Lord, hear our prayers today. Just take a moment now, whatever your prayer, whatever your need, whatever your concern, just lift that to God in, in these few moments now. Maybe there's people you need to pray for. Maybe you need to grab someone during morning tea and say, hey, can you pray for me? Maybe you're losing faith. And you need a sign, a small cloud rising up. He hears your prayer. Maybe you're tired from waiting. May the Lord be your strength. May the Lord be your hope. May the Lord God bring your answer and bring your healing and bring your miracle and bring your deliverance and bring your joy and hope. Lord, build your church here in this place. Fill us with your grace. Fill us with your hope. Lord, bless us as your people. Give us the energy. Give us the vision. Give us the joy, we pray. To be your hands and feet. Lord, hear the prayers of your people. In this place, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We're going to sing. Thank you, Michael. Enjoy some morning tea after. I'll catch up.